Good evening, everybody, and thank you for attending tonight's 24th annual Shopper Marketing Hall of Fame induction. Boy, does that make me feel old. Wow. You know, I got, I got to wear these. Good God. Every class is special in its own way, but this year's class is striking in that, well, they've each made their mark in a very specialized areas, a sales road warrior, a marketing analytics innovator, an e-commerce pioneer. They nonetheless placed the shopper at the center of everything they did and do. You know, now when we talk about a Hall of Fame, we tend to think of solo performers and outsized egos to match, like uh, Michael Jordan. You know, last week, uh, the former Chicago Bulls manager, Jerry Krause, passed away. Michael Jordan never forgave Jerry Krause for telling the press during their run of six NBA titles in the 1990s, players and coaches don't win championships, organizations do. And you know, Michael might have been right to take offense at that widely reported quote, except that's not what Krause said. The newspapers dropped a word, alone. Players and coaches alone don't win championships. Organizations do. This morning, Mike McMahon, the Institute's new executive director, called shopper marketing, or effective marketing to shoppers, the ultimate team sport. And he's right. And I know that's a sentiment that's shared by the three individuals we're honoring tonight. Because in truth, we're really honoring three terrific organizations, E&J Gallo Winery, Tyson Foods, and Wakeford Foods ShopRite stores. It is indeed a team sport. And here's the other thing about this Hall of Fame stuff. It does sort of sound final career-wise, but I promise you nobody's announcing a farewell tour. No one's retiring to the rocking chair. And as you'll hear over the next few minutes, they're all very much still in the game and are in their own ways are already helping to build the future of marketing to shoppers. Now, speaking of sports, our first honoree didn't originally plan to be here tonight. You see, Herb Smith, English major, four-year varsity football standout, Cal Poly, class of 89, go Mustangs, originally planned to become a famous football coach, maybe the next Urban Meyer, Mike Leach. But after his playing days and a season of X and O's, the coaching life, which was especially brutal on families back in those days, Herb called an audible. Growing up in Southern California, Herb, like all of tonight's inductees, worked retail as a kid at a grocery store in Yorba Linda, cleaning up after the butchers and selling meat at the meat counter. There's a natural affinity between coaching and sales management. And one of the things that Gallo is big on is mentoring. So in 1989, when he was deciding on a career path, he was particularly impressed with Gallo's training program. He joined the company as an entry-level salesperson with a territory in the Ventura Camarillo area, calling on all the retail trade stores. Herb's grounding and shopper marketing began on day one as a salesperson where they had him building good old point of purchase displays, placing bottleneckers, doing everything in store. A lot of big life lessons came out of that experience. Number one being, tuck your tie in. Everyone wore ties back in those days, and Herb kept cutting them off with the box cutters while opening cases of wine. <laughs> oh, and one other thing, never leave your only route book on the roof of a car. I'm... But he learned the business from the inside out. Along the way, he was fortunate enough to work with Ernest Gallo personally and embraced his philosophy Everything starts with the consumer. Spend as much time as you can in retail stores and always be curious about their behavior. There's a direct parallel between what the brothers did back then and what Gallo does in shopper marketing today under the leadership of Joseph Gallo, Ernest's son. In 2010, the company began reorganizing nationally. Trade development became customer development. Herb also took responsibility for the Category Management Center of Excellence, and in 2013, digital was added to existing responsibilities. And then about four years ago, Joseph Gallo challenged all his executives to make the company a true shopper marketing organization, a move Herb says is one of the best things they've ever done. Gallo changed planning cycles, developed 360-degree integrated shopper plans, built decision trees, dove into aisle reinvention work. One of the strengths of Gallo as a company, Herb says, is that we always rally behind a goal. It's a team sport, remember? Now, if you go looking for Herb's office today at Gallo's headquarters in Modesto, you really won't find it 
That's because his real desk is tucked away inside a distribution facility up in Hayward, California. And why? It's closer to the Bay Area's airports, a feature that matters most to a 28-year Gallo veteran and road warrior. And he means it. When he says he tries to walk a new store every day, that's every single day. Indeed, when we first met uh, Herb for our first Hall of Fame interview, it was Herb's first day back in the Hayward office after three solid weeks and weekends nonstop on the road. Now, it's customary that people write in with notes and congratulations in our Hall of Fame, and this year we got a lot of them. I'll share a f them in full after the event, but here are a few highlights. Dave Stewart of Dollar General nominated Herb. Herb was influential in putting the right people in place on the Dollar General business early on and truly understood what was needed in order to achieve our save sales goals. Bob Richardson of Clorox nominated him too. Herb is truly one of the business's outstanding people. He does a tremendous job balancing his day job, managing sales and people, and contributing to the industry work and support. And he's the first to reach out to help people in tough situations. He always has your back. Steve Sprinkle, Gallo's VP, U.S. Sales. Herb is the embodiment of our corporate values, respect, integrity, humility, innovation, commitment, and t teamwork. And finally, Herb's boss, Tom Gillespie, speaking on behalf of the entire Gallo family, we are extremely proud of Herb's induction into the Shopper Marketing Hall of Fame. Above all his accomplishments, Herb is a person of the highest integrity, and we are fortunate to have him as a friend and colleague. When I, I did get one more note last night late from another old coworker of yours at Cal Poly. Okay, now he's head football coach in a Pac-12 at Washington State, but yeah, Mike Leach stepped out of a staff meeting late last night to send this our way. Herb was a classic overachiever that made himself a college football player. Because of his work ethic and dedication, he became an all-conference center for us. We always said Herb would be successful in life after football because he had so much passion for whatever he was doing. It's not a coincidence that Herb is being honored tonight. It was easy to see it coming way back then. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight's first inductee, 2017 Hall of Fame, DP, off-premise customer development, Ian J. Gallo, Herb Smith. Holy cow, uh, where do you go from there? I'll tell you what, Bill, uh, you're very sneaky. The good news is I sat with Peter at dinner today, so uh, tonight, and I got a lot of scoop on you, so uh, get ready. Uh, thank you very much for those kind words. I haven't talked to Mike Leach in a long time. Uh, that is, uh, that's truly special, and obviously he's gone on to do uh, really great things. Uh, before I start, and I've got some very brief remarks, First of all, congratulations to Cheryl and Chris, uh, co-honorees this evening. It's an honor to be in both your companies and certainly well-deserved. To, uh, to Peter Hoyt and Mike McMahon and Steve Frenda from the, and the entire Path to Purchase Institute, not only thank you for the honor, but <clears throat> uh, Bill talked about it in his remarks. We, we, we've traditionally, for the last 20 or 25 years, had a traditional trade marketing organization. Um, four years ago, we really wanted to embark and, and try to build a best-in-class shopper marketing organization. And the first thing we did, for those of you that are new to the Institute, was we joined the Institute. And we would not be where we are today in terms of our journey to a true shopper marketing organization without the Institute. So thank you very much to you guys. Uh, Bill talked about the Gallo family and kind of my career. You know, I did aspire, and I hope there's some Buckeye fans in the audience. Uh, go, go Bucks, OH. Uh, love it, love it. Sorry. Ho hopefully, no Michigan fans in the audience. Uh, that's always a bad thing. I'm sorry I went there. I couldn't help it. <clears throat> but I did aspire to, to, uh, to, to be a coach and uh, shifted gears and one of the best things I did was, was join the Gallo Winery and the Gallo family. Um, you know, they, everybody starts from the ground up, and those of you in the audience that remember Bartles and James, and I'm probably embarrassed to say that brand, because a lot of people probably don't even know what it is. 
But in 1989, I was building Bartles and James displays in stores in, uh, in Southern California. So the good news is there is some giggles out there, so some people do know the brand, which is great. Great, thank you. I, it was a good brand. It was a great brand. Love that. The, the winery will especially love that. That's, that's, that's good to hear. I'll pass that on to Modesto. But we've, uh, we've certainly come a long way from, from those days. I think we had 20 brands in 1989. We have over 150 now. We define premium wine at $8 and above. Uh, we had less than 1% of our business was premium wine, and, and now it's a third of our business. So we've really come a long way, and, and Gallo's been you know, phenomenal company for me, fast-paced, dynamic industry of CPG, and I really fell in love with it, and it's, it's been terrific, and I, I'd be remiss if I didn't thank uh, the Gallo family. I know we have some retail customers in the room and also some very good supplier partners. Thank you for your business. Thank you for your partnership, your strategic thoughts, your collaboration. Uh, we do a lot of good things together, and we, we achieve common goals together, and, and I really appreciate it, and, I, and so does our team. Uh, to my team, uh, we, try to, we strive to be the best in both sales and category management, and certainly in digital, like many companies in the room today. Um, but I guess what I would say, you know, it makes it easy for me to go to work every day to work with the team that I have, and I'm really proud of them. I'm very fortunate to have my wife Cindy in the room <clears throat> tonight, and uh, she's been very supportive. Round of applause for Cindy for sure. <clears throat> My team makes it easy to go to work every day, and, and being with Cindy makes it hard to go to work every day. We, um, and all, we all have, you know, significant others, and, you know, you're only as good as your partner. Um, we challenge them a lot. We travel a lot. We're gone a lot. You know, I'm, not too proud, you know, being gone three weeks and three weekends, it's, that wasn't the best part, right, honey? <laughs> um, but obviously, I, you know, Cindy's been phenomenal, great support to me, and uh, obviously great for our family. So, uh, honey, thank you, I love you. Thank, thanks for all you do. So thanks again for this uh, recognition and, uh, and award. I really appreciate it, and, and I hope everybody has a great evening. Thanks. Good work. <laughs> very, very well done, yes. <laughs> There are many paths to the Shopper Marketing Hall of Fame, and tonight at least, they all begin with a shopper-facing job at an early age. Our second honoree, Christopher Witt, Vice VP Shopper in Category Development, Tyson Foods is no exception. He grew up in Iowa, the 10th of 11 kids, and while that might sound, might sound a little bit like Little House on the Prairie out there in the Hawkeye State, he's indeed a city kid. His family was in real estate, but he got started in high school working at Target Store Number 50 in Bettendorf, stocking and doing precision and zone merchandising. Chris saw very early on the value of getting retail organized right. That Target job, he says now, definitely put me onto this track. From there, it was on to Drake University, fast-tracking into an MBA program, and then a, a job at Dial as a sales rep. And yes, like Herb, carrying a bag store to store. Nowadays, I suppose like Bartles and James, not everybody knows what uh, carrying a bag means. But carrying a bag means hard work, says Chris. 10 stores a day, a 300 store territory, knowing every store manager, getting kicked out a lot, working at 2 a.m. resetting stores, schlepping POP in the back of a Pontiac station wagon, understanding what's really going on at retail and what these guys really go through. There ought to be an Effie Award, E for Effort, for this kind of work. In 1996, Chris joined Gillette, doing shopper marketing category leadership on Oral-B, was promoted in the Gillette organization, working on their largest customer, Walgreens. From Gillette, he moved on to Pepsi, 
Pepsi being, in Chris's estimation, the Ivy League of CPG, where he learned more systematic ways of looking at categories and getting under the hood on shopper behavior. The foundation of what he's doing now started back then. He calls it people, process, and automation, a systematic way of organizing a category and creating platforms. He found his way to Tyson via a complicated set of transactions involving Hillshire, Sara Lee, Pinnacle Foods, that ended with Tyson winning a bidding war and lucky for them, winning Chris as well. Today he manages a group of 110 executives that create, develop, and execute a thousand programs annually across Tyson's retailer base. He's now responsible for insights, category leadership, shopper marketing, activation teams, as well as Tyson's learning agenda generation, primary research, and creative development. He's also in charge of 1,500 in-store experiential marketers a unique capability that he calls humans as media. As digital explodes, people out there still crave human interaction. So yeah, it's a sampling and demoing team, but it's one that can go deep, talking about the chef, the different recipes, the history of the company. Now to make all of this stuff hum, you need to be maniacally focused on refining shopper marketing execution. Working with Foresight ROI, Tyson can tie all sorts of data into traditional marketing mix and thus has been able to improve measurable performance in every year of what is now a five-year effort. It's also enabled Chris and his team to take shopper marketing into the boardroom to the point that now brand and seasonal events get referenced on earnings calls and in analyst conversations, as well as other points of pride like the number of category captaincies Tyson has, 23 when Chris started, 143 today. That's a metric. <laughs> when Rick Evans of Foresight nominated him, he made a good point. You really don't need high-powered analytics to predict this award. Under Chris's leadership, the Tyson team doubled shopper marketing ROI. One of Chris's mentors, Ann Fink, saw this coming too. Chris Witt is a true talent and asset to our industry while at PepsiCo. He led with genuine humility and strong intellect while showing the ability to connect with a vi variety of constituents. My most sincere congratulations. Sally Grimes, president retail at Tyson. There's no question his skill has elevated our capabilities and performance at Tyson. Chris Witt is a legend here at Tyson. Wendy Jean, uh, Chris has been an inspiration to me and our team. His leadership style combines poise, confidence, resilience, and wisdom that is seldom seen at corporations anymore. Sue Toy, Chris always pushes his leaders to think about what's next, sometimes before we've even delivered the what's now. But that's what keeps us thought leaders in our space. And finally, this from Tyson President and CEO Tom Hayes. We couldn't be prouder of Chris. Not only is he an expert in the craft of shopper marketing, but from our perspective, he is defining the discipline. He's built an amazing team, and it's on the back of their work that we have attained and maintained. And I did get one more note, and I'll just read it. Um, Chris, I want to congratulate you on your induction into the Shopper Marketing Hall of Fame. No doubt you've come a long way since you worked the lawn and garden department at a, as a high school kid at our Target store in Bettendorf. <laughs> like a lot of us, you caught the CPG bug early on, stocking shelves and watching our guests interact with great American brands. After three decades in this business, working for Tar some of Target's most important partners, Gillette, PepsiCo, Hillshire, and Tyson, we want to say thank you for your leadership and lasting contributions to our industry. Once a Target team member, always a Target team member. You make us proud. Signed, Brian Cornell, Chairman and CEO of Target Corporation. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our second 2017 Hall of Fame inductee, VP Shopper and Category, Tyson Foods, Chris Witt. Telling me, I can't, that, that is unbelievable. So Brian actually, believe it or not, after many years was my boss at PepsiCo, um, you know, it's probably 10 years ago. So 10, 12 years ago. So that's pretty incredible that he's now CEO of Target. So and it also makes me feel like an antique too because the time is going by very fast. So, um, so anyway, thank you. So first off, so like 
Herb. Um, this is a, an immense privilege. I don't, you don't even have words for it. You, Bill, you absolutely destroyed me. I just got to say, when, with that last comment, that was just nuts. So um, I would like to thank the Path to Purchase, obviously, for uh, the induction and uh, this whole evening. It's just a, an immense privilege. And like everybody in the room, you can't do your career without the folks at home. And uh, clearly, my, uh, my wife, Marcy, gives up a lot for me to be on the road. You have to be on the road every week to make this thing happen. Um, the retailer, the retail, retail environment is the most critical thing. You cannot not be in that store um, for, it to, for, for it to happen. So um, it's the most important thing. So travel has to happen. And um, it's critical. And you know, it's my wife and my kids that give up a lot for that. So 50 weeks a year on the road, and that's how it goes after 30 years. So anybody that's in the in industry, it, you know, after 30 years, you, you do feel it though. So. This might be my last speech. I have no idea. So <laughs> I think I might be feeling that. So um, um, along with that, I have to say that my, my team is fantastic. I built the dream team. I had the opportunity to build a dream team. We, uh, we fired about half the team that we had initially and rehired the best people in the industry, have had it um, for four years now. And um, I got the best. I got the luxury of hiring the best. So, um, and that's Wendy, Jean, Sue, and Mark. You know, every day that you're there with me on this journey, and and you know my my late night um, emails and my early morning emails. So, um, thank you for being there for me. Um, and then also my agency partners. So through the course of time, this cannot happen without agency partners. So um, early on in my career, I had. The great opportunity of working with Ken Barnett with Mars Advertising. And Ken and his mom invented Chopper Marketing. So that's how it went, and they, they did. And they were the roots of this a long time ago and um, really invented the in-store component. And I had a chance to work with them at the very onset of my career. So um, I got that experience. And um, you know, no one even knew what Chopper Marketing was. It was in-store, you know, POP, it was POP and it's become a lot more than POP, right? So, um, and, and this whole room has made it. So, um, uh, I, all I can say is, you know, those were the roots of it, but my agency partners today, ASM, in marketing, fantastic partners, couldn't be more part of what we do every day, and just, um, you know, they're, they're with me along the way, they're part of the team. So, um, all that. So with that, Bill, I have to say though, um, you know, with the good, the comments which were, uh, you went deep. You get, I honestly had a, a conversation with Bill, and I'm like, wow, that that was that's pretty deep in terms of uh, finding those people. Um, but um, I did have, you know, some feedback though coming back a kind of a different way, and it's through Twitter. And I don't know, you know, a lot of you know that Twitter is kind of the modern form of communication, obviously, right? So there's some negative stuff and positive stuff. I don't know what this is actually, but I'd just like to read a couple uh, Twitter comments. You, you all like Twitter, right? Who doesn't like Twitter? <laughs> so a couple of them. There's a big retailer actually located where we're located in Arkansas that writes this. Chris, your marketing knowledge and input have taken us to a different place. I'm not sure we want to be in that place. <laughs> so going back to my Gillette days, another one coming in from a drug chain leader, beginning with a W. Congrats and all on that HOF stuff. Listen, you blank. You still owe us for that cough and cold end cap. So <laughs> it's coming back. And you get it from all angles, really, with um, you know the agency angle. So a big shopper marketing ag agency exec writes this. Take this the right way. Try starting a meeting without saying, let's talk about the retainer. <laughs> Blank you, Chris Witt. So I don't know. <laughs> so really good input also from all of those people. That's, again, Interesting, right? So with, anyway, with that, I, I just have to say this is an immense honor. Thank you um, to the Institute, and thank you. Well, gee, I, I, 
here I thought I, editing all those out was a good idea, so okay. Um, you know, while there's room for debate as to the reasons why, there's little doubt that women are underrepresented in the STEM field, science, technology, engineering, math, STEM. And Progressive Grocer Magazine's commendable efforts to promote top women in grocery notwithstanding, the same can still be said for the retail food industry. As Cheryl Williams, CIO at Wakeford Foods and our third and final inductee for 2017 will tell you, being in technology and in the grocery industry, well, you know, I'm used to being the only woman in the room. But judging from Kantar Retail's latest power ranking, a lot of people are very, very lucky she was there at all. If gauged by just sales ranking alone, Wakefern is the nation's 29th largest retailer. But two months ago, the industry's executives, whose opinions drive the Kantar power rankings, raised Wakefern all the way up to number nine for its use of digital platforms. Clearly, when it comes to technology, this member-owned cooperative is punching well above its weight class. And since joining the company in 1996 as manager of retail systems, Cheryl Williams has been a constant in this company's climb to technology excellence. Her parents both worked in technology fields, so Cheryl started young in computers, although back then computers as we know them didn't really exist. In high school, she was in an, adv in an advanced math program, so she took computer programming as an elective, working on a PDP-11 mini computer that was always short-circuiting because the air conditioner that kept it from overheating also dripped into it. Like our other honorees, she had a shopper-facing job in high school. When she was 16, she got a job at Macy's in the boys' department, a job she held on to, as a matter of fact, until she got married because she didn't want to give up the 20% employee discount. <laughs> Math. She majored in computer science at Rutgers in an era when there were hardly any other women in the program, STEM again. Back then, the computer science curriculum resided inside the math department. And Cheryl, for example, took five semesters of advanced college calculus. Just saying that sentence gives me a migraine. <laughs> and here's a sign of things ahead. During a college internship in Revlon's technology department as a basic programmer, she was asked to join Revlon's advanced manufacturing systems group, the college kid. After graduation, she interviewed with Pathmark, was captivated by their enthusiasm, and fell in love with the 24-7 nature of the grocery business. She moved on after 12 years with Pathmark when the company decided to outsource its technology to IBM. So in 1996, she joined Wakefern. Soon she was promoted to Director of Applications Development, adding finance, payroll, logistics, retail to her responsibilities. After a time, Joe Sheridan, who Cheryl says always pushed us to be ahead of the curve, tapped her to start a new division within Wakefern as VP of Marketing, an area outside her comfort zone precisely because of her analytical background. He wanted a group that had classic advertising, merchandising functions, but would be more consumer specific and able to look at data and spot trends faster. So her marketing team began sifting data and began developing its own series of shopper marketing programs, Hispanic, natural, organic, African-American, baby, kids, kosher, year-long annual programs with a variety of levels. And the innovations came fast. Shop right from home, now one of the fastest growing parts of the business, a mobile app a major rollout of digital coupon programming with adoption rates that are off the charts, Price Plus Insights, which shares shopper data with manufacturers, mixing analytics for brick and mortar with digital, quite possibly an industry first, certainly an industry leader. That's a lot of change for any company to manage, but Wakefern is a retailer-owned cooperative with 50 member operators who are always out in their stores, and they bring a realism to the work that helps everyone move faster. And now anyone who's ever walked a few ShopRite stores, I've walked one with a friend, uh, can't help but be impressed by the staggering product variety at each individual member store. Taking all of that online, it's a huge data effort. But everything is built around a promise to Wakefern shoppers. Wherever possible, they'll have the same experience online as they have inside the store. We're known for being difficult New Yorkers sometimes, Cheryl says, but what the heck? It's also known that if we say we're going to do something, we do it. And that's a sentiment echoed by our colleague and nominator, Donna Zambo. I'm very proud to have nominated Cheryl for this well-earned honor. Her passion to innovate, push herself, and all those around her has been key to Wakeford's success. Rich, uh, my web grocer, Rich Tarrant. Cheryl has always 
been a visionary at the intersection of technology and retail grocery. While many retailers are currently playing catch up in the digital space, ShopRite is on firm footing thanks to her leadership. Bill Purcell of Islefire, Cheryl, has made a career of balancing cutting edge innovation with a practical eye for scale deployment that's consistently informed management strategies. Joe Sheridan, President, COO, Wake Fern, I've had the pleasure of watching Cheryl at her best, attacking business issues, fearlessly pushing beyond traditional limits, always with the purpose of bringing forth nothing short of excellence. Her passion for innovation and can-do attitude has enabled her to create and lead our marketing, e-commerce, and IT divisions, all indisputably best in class in our industry. And here's Ned Gladstone. On behalf of the Wakefern Board of Directors, what a great honor to be recognized for your talents and energy, your unique blend of technical savvy, business knowledge, and common sense has contributed immeasurably to ShopRite's continued market leadership. Congratulations for this well-deserved recognition. Now, you were, you told me you were born in New Brunswick, grew up in East Brunswick, married in North Brunswick, and live in South Brunswick. I, I didn't know which mayor to call, so, <laughs> so you'll have to settle for this letter. We'd like you to think that, dear Cheryl, we'd like to think that Rutgers, your alma mater, helped shape your future, one that has seen you rise over the past two decades to join the executive leadership team at Wakefern. We are all very proud of you at Rutgers, and we congratulate on your induction into the Shopper Marketing Hall of Fame that's signed Robert Ed Goodman, Executive Dean, on behalf of the entire Faculty of Computer Science at Rutgers, the State University of New Jersey. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight's third and final inductee, CIO of Wakeford, Gerald Williams. That was uh, incredible. Thank you for that introduction. And I actually almost started crying with the Joe Sheridan and Ned Gladstein comments because those were very unexpected and, and very uh, heartfelt. Um, I'm honored to be among such a distinguished group of recipients. And congratula uh, congratulations to my fellow honorees. Um, thank you to the Path to Purchase Institute and Shopper Marketing Magazine. And a special call out to Steve Frenda, who always keeps Wake Fern, ShopRite, Tarp of Mind. So thank you for everything you do for us. <laughs> uh, I consider myself extremely fortunate uh, to be part of the Wake Fern Food Cooperative. Um, you know, as Bill said, we've got 49 member families who own and operate ShopRite stores in their communities. For over 70 years, the consumer has been the center of their attention. There is a unique connectivity between our members and their shoppers. It was always important to understand what the consumer wanted and to provide it, even if it didn't make the most sense or wasn't the most efficient solution. And so people would come in and tell us, you could be a lot more efficient, you can do things a lot easier. And we'd always look back at our members would say, no, if that particular consumer wanted that item, we'd keep that item. And I think that's the biggest challenge for us at Wakefern was the fact that how do we take this personalized experience and bring it to life through shopper marketing? So I started to think about this award and I started to think about shopper marketing. And I looked back and I said, you know what, let me look at Wikipedia to see when the term shopper marketing originated. And actually, according to Wikipedia, the origins date back to Sam's Club, May of 2001. So they're getting credit whether true or not. Um, <laughs> So I thought back to my early experiences with shopper marketing, and our current president, Joe Sheridan, who at the time was our executive vice president, had a concept of consumer marketing. And what he would talk about is instead of brand forward, pushing the product forward, it would be consumer back. We'd think about the consumer, what the consumer wanted, and figure out how to deliver that. So then I went back and I found a presentation in my files dated December 15th, 1999. Note that was before 2001. Uh, and the presentation contained Wake Fern's marketing vision. 
And it said, by 2001, Wakefern will lead the industry in developing marketing programs that are rooted in consumer knowledge. The work we develop will be utilized by the organization to drive sales. And I was very fortunate to be part of this group. So we had a marketing oversight committee. We launched Life Stage Lifestyle Marketing. We engaged our key vendor partners. So I know a bunch of folks in the room, Joy from P&G, I just saw her. Campbell's, Kraft, Colgate, General Mills were all part of the team. It was unique. They sat in our offices and they worked alongside of us. My role at the time, I was in technology, was to deliver an open and flexible technical solution that provides effective consumer knowledge faster and more efficiently than the competition. This was the beginning of formalized shopper marketing at Wakefern. So fast forward 18 years, and I want to thank all of those who I had the pleasure to work with on our shopper marketing journey. So the different areas, whether it was marketing, whether it was technology, two of my colleagues in the room, Tom Haley and Carol Hedechek, I don't know where you are, but you've been on that journey, been on that journey a long time. Uh, with me, regardless of the role that I've been in the company. Uh, I want to you know, thank our associates and all of our associates, our members, and all of our vendor partners, and everybody that has helped us um, become what we are today in terms of shopper marketing. I'm very excited about the future and the increased role that technology will continue to play. So who thought back in the early days when I took computer science that this is where it would take me? Um, but I love the intersection of the consumer and technology and I'm very happy to be in a position where I can really change that today from a technology perspective. And I look forward to working with the whole Ensemble IQ family of brands. And again, thank you for every, you know, to everybody and thank you for this very distinguished honor. Thank you very much. Let's do the Rolling Stones. Wait, wait, wait. wait, 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 wait. I'm sorry, I have to go back because I didn't put this in my speech and I have to thank my husband of 34 years. I am so sorry. <laughs> and I meant to do it and I didn't do it, so I had to come back. <laughs> nice recovery. How about a hand for the 2017 Shopper Marketing Hall of Fame?